Hello and welcome back to Shadow Boxing. In the hot chair today is the Honorable Bob Kachira. Thank you, Bob. Bob. Let's continue the discussion on the law and order mm. for a while. So many people saying in our wonderful state that we are a police state. Mm. It used to be Queensland, they say, but now WA is the police state of Australia. And if this is true, probably that was the reason for the decision for Colin Barnett to stop recruiting of police. Well, firstly, I, I don't agree that we're a police state. Uh, I think the police force, by and large, do a very good job. Um, they are under-resourced. We do need more police officers because our city is expanding at an enormous rate and you can't police in the same style. So it's what do you think, what was the reason for Colin well, it, and Co to stop recruiting for one year? Well, it's, it's a, a great way of saving money at the end of the day. It's all part of the, the, the service delivery that's being cut back and the cost cuts this government is now imposing on us, mainly because of the levels of debt that they've incurred in the last four years. I mean, that is incredible that they've gone from virtually a debt-free uh, uh, budget to now around about $23 billion that so we owe. We need to, or they need to... They've got to cut back. Cut and the, back the most and obvious place is, is the police. police. What I say to people when I'm out there after 35 years as a copper, do you feel any safer? And, and the overwhelming the view is no, particularly older people. They are feeling more and more vulnerable. Now, statistically, that may be a perception. But perception becomes reality. And if you don't and deal with it... And media helps the people... Well, I think so. I, uh, well, it does. It does to a degree. And uh, I, I'm not always uh, uh, supportive of some of these police shows that they have on television, like things like The Force, because that really gives a very false, Im false impression of what the overall police force does. And I'm happy to debate law and order with anybody after 35 years of doing it, uh, because I know what actually happens. I don't deal in perceptions. I deal in reality. People saying very often, you know, we over govern by law. We are really selling out our freedom, our basic freedoms, because of the strengthening of the law. Mm -hmm. The last example for that is probably the one which is the Criminal Association Control Act, which has just been passed yep. by the Liberals. When you have laws that you try to use to target one specific group in the community, and that law then targets, by the very nature of the law, other people within the community, that's when you have difficulties. And part of the debate that went on in Parliament, yes. where the Barnett government tried to depict the Labor government as being against trying to stop bikie gangs, nothing was further from the truth. Had that specific law targeted those groups, and I've got to tell you, I know a lot of the people that are in those groups and they deserve everything they get, quite frankly, but had the law been very specific, there would have not been any need for argument, debate and amendments. You, you, you tend to lose sight of the fact that your laws should concentrate on those that break the law. Not 100% of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, the population. The difference between us, for instance, and America is that our laws were firstly designed under the Westminster system to think that about 95% of the community will do the right thing. 5% won't. Our laws and the way the police operate should target that 5%. We shouldn't be bringing in laws and practices that target 100% because of the minority that make it bad for the rest of us. And we've seen that with ma many of the legislative changes in terms of drinking, in terms you mentioned earlier on, some of the drug changes. Yes. The intentions are great. But the old saying that the road to hell is paved with good intention is a very true thing. So what you're saying, Bob, is not rocket science. So you don't need to be no, we a rocket scientist to understand these principles. So what do you think? Why the current government, the Barnard government, could not cope with understanding basics? Like that, what you just said. Well, look, it's easy to be populist. It's easy to come up with so-called popular decisions. Um, uh, it's they not think always this is the way to win the election? Yeah, of course. It's about, it, politics is always about winning elections at the end of the day. This is why I got into trouble when I was in Parliament before, because I tend to be fiercely independent in my views, and I tend to want to lead from the front. So what's happening if you go back to Parliament, Bob, and you get again into trouble? I will probably <laughs> will. I mean, look, I said, when Mark came to see me uh, earlier this year and asked me if I'd come back to Parliament, I said, you realise what I'm like, Mark? And he said, look, I realise that, Bob. He said, but your value is just that. 
Okay, on that note, Bob, mm. the selection. And I was talking to one of an ALP member who, after 40 years of membership, yep. don't renew his membership this year because he just got enough from the local and the federal mm. labors and the politics or the lack of the politics and policy and philosophy and also of the big, big power of the faceless man who makes the selections. So who are the faceless men in WA? Who makes decisions from the unions for the party? Okay. I think it's two person. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, and I, I, I don't get into that. One of the issues that I had before was over pre-selection. But by and large, there is a movement within all political parties, not just the Labor Party. You've seen the same fighting that's going on at the moment in the seat of Bateman, I think, with the Liberal Party. You will always get power blocks within all organisations that will want to get their people up, if you like. But I think at the end of the day, that if you select sensibly people that are going to deal with their electorate, and can I come back to the electorate again? Regardless of how those people get there, it's what they do when they get there that's important. It's whether or not they support the people that at the end of the day have to put their tick on the ballot paper to get them there. All of the power in the world internally uh, doesn't help that. In fact, we saw last time when I think uh, our party picked um, a so-called dream team where people were very much looked at. And I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that. Whether I agreed with yes, them, it doesn't matter. By and large, the fundamental difference between us and the Liberals is that we don't see coming into power as the end, we see it as the means to actually get change. And by and large, if you want social change within the community, if you want the ordinary work person in the street, and I'm not talking about the blue collar worker now, I'm talking everybody below the level of major executives in mining companies, every one of them needs to be supported politically. You cannot just rule for the sake of those people that want to make a lot of money, for instance, in the, in the mining industry. There is a fundamental difference between people that work in the mining industry, people that don't work in the mining industry, and those people that are running mining industry. And there there, is, there, there, sure. it, is, it is a huge difference between those people. I'm happy you brought up the mining industry because multinational companies all over the world got one motivation, to take as much profit mm. as they can but not just the profit, but take it out from the countries they're working. For example, it's just been revealed that uh, two companies, two big American companies, not really paying tax in Australia. One of them is Google, who made $1 billion income yep. and paid $70,000 income tax on the $1 billion. Another one is Apple made in Australia, got an income of $5 billion and paid tax last year on the $5 billion, mm. $100 million. Why the unions, why the Labour Party, why even the opposition on state or, 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 or federal government let that happen? I think with the debate that's gone on over the mining tax and the profit sharing that should occur, the debate that's gone on over the last three years, you could hardly say that, for instance, that the Federal Labor Party is, is, uh, is not doing something about that. I think uh, regardless of what your views are on uh, the mining tax, I think the one overwhelming thing that every Australian supports is that it should everything in terms of profit that comes from our natural resources should be shared and shared equally. And I don't have any argument with that whatsoever. And I don't think that's occurring at the moment. I think the two examples you've given in relation to Google and that relate to most of the major uh, uh, natural resource companies and multinationals that occur. Look, by their very nature, they're capitalist companies. It's not about the benefit to Australia. It's about the benefit to their company, to them, to their shareholders. But look, let's bring it back more now to, yes. to a local level here. Yes, please. Since that argument has gone on has, and has been strongly supported by the Barnett government in terms of what he's essentially saying is that there's going to be less tax paid by those companies by supporting them, what that means is that our $23 billion debt will continue to climb because the less money that the government is able to take in through royalties and tax systems, I mean, I would be screaming blue murder to um, Barnett, if I was Barnett, to make sure that we can do something about uh, lessening some of the tax burdens on local companies here. 
on some of our, our small business. I was small small business minister for a number and of manufacturer years. Manufacturer, something and manufacturer, in here, exactly. Not what, everything what, always what, where's where's the argument being put forward, for instance, for state agreements to include a level of local manufacture here? No. Where, where where is where are the arguments for? And this is one of the and people bash the unions, but at the end of the day, they're the one group that are getting up and saying. Look, why should all this business be going offshore? Why should all these profits be, go, go, be taken offshore? Why can't Quinana be the most vital hub in Australia for the production of oil and gas platforms, for instance? Why do we have to... My brother works in China building gas platforms. He, he's an engineer who works for a major company in China building gas platforms for the Northwest Shelf. Why aren't those gas platforms being built here. Why isn't the tax that's going offshore being diverted back into Western Australia to be able to re reduce the costs, reduce the capacity to produce and allow the unions and, and allow the local West Australian that's not working in the mining industry, the local to kid get that can't get from exactly. It. <laughs> You've got to spread the benefit. It, 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 I, but it's I, not happening in here, so no, it, it's not. You think you're going to stand up for that if well, you've been elected? Uh, obviously, if I'm talking about, it, of course, <laughs> I'm going to stand up for it. And I'm not a policy maker at this stage. No, I'm simply a candidate. But I just look at it and I think to myself, look, the one thing I did realise when I first went into politics, when Jeff Gallup came to ask me to stand when I was still in the police force, I looked at the Labor viewpoint, the Labor manifesto, if you like. I looked at the Liberal Party manifesto yes. because I also had an approach from the other side of politics back in those days. And, so um, what was your conclusion, Bob? That if I want to support my community and my local electors, and the local community of Western Australia, the best thing to do was to vote Labor and, quite frankly, support Labor. And, um, yeah, look, there's some philosophical viewpoints that I don't always agree with, with my party. As I said, I got myself into a bit of trouble last time for doing that. Yes. But at the end of the day, basically, I like to make sure that my kids, my grandkids, will have a, an equal life to those multi-millionaires that stand on a truck in, in, uh, in Forest Place uh, and say, axe the tax. I, I, I like to see some of that flow back to us, not from a federal perspective, but from a local perspective. Well, good luck for that. That's a mission for you. Thanks, Tibor. And thank you for being with us on Shadow Boxing. My pleasure. And thank you for watching us and we're coming back next week, same station, same time. Thank you.